I have a very small bed. A twin. But I don't like that. I want a bigger bed. A queen. So let's make one. I want my new bed to look cool, look modern, look rustic, and have some storage at the front. So now that we have everything so specifically defined, let's get started. And so the first thing we're going to do is of course acquire our lumber. I've decided to go with outdoor lumber for this because not only is it very sturdy and very affordable, but it'll also afford us that rugged looking aesthetic which we're desperately trying to achieve. And so after we've made our selection and picked out the straightest boards Home Depot has to offer, we can take these bad boys home and begin the actual construction of the frame. Now first off, I'm going to take our square posts and just begin by cutting them down to the proper length. We'll need four at 64 inches long and four at 21 inches long. And these pieces will comprise the head and foot end of the bed. But first, we'll need to join them together. To do this, I'm going to make a four inch deep cut down the middle of my table saw going halfway through the lumber. Well, almost out the middle. It's actually one saw blade width away from the middle. We'll then flip the piece over and do the same cut on the other end. And we'll follow through and repeat this process for both ends of every piece we've cut. And once done, it should look something like this. We'll then reposition the saw blade so it continues to line up with the cut. And then repeat the whole process for the other side. And once you're done with that, it should look something like this. And if you see the X I marked on it, that just indicates the short side. So now to finish cutting the joints, we're going to have to cut off the short end. I'm going to take my circular saw in a speed square and cut it at exactly three and a half inches. And then of course repeat for all of the pieces. Now before we go too far, I'm going to take one of the 64 inch long posts and cut out a channel for a shelf. And we'll cut this channel at one and three quarters inch wide and three quarters inch deep. And after that, we can place the parts of our frame together and begin to fasten down the joints. To do this, I'll of course first take a carpenter square to make sure everything's squared up. Then I'll glue the joints and countersink in five screws through the top and four screws through the bottom. And with all the screws now set in place, it's time to go back and fill in those holes. To do this, I'm just going to very simply glue the end of a dowel rod, mallet it into one of the holes, and then cut it flush using a coping saw. Not too bad, things are actually starting to take shape. Now, although we're not quite done with these pieces yet, I'm still going to take a short break to sand everything down. Now I'm going to take some oak wood and cut out some mounting blocks, some blocks that will help attach the front and back of our bed frame to the sides of the bed frame. I'm then going to go ahead and mount these on the top inside corner of each bed frame piece, making sure to mount them an inch and a half from the sides. This inch and a half gap will allow space for the sides of our bed frame to be placed. Once we have the mounting block securely fashioned, we can switch our attention to adding the shelf to the front frame. 
I found this scrap piece of plywood in the garage that is the perfect width. I just need to cut it down to the right length. And one other thing before we get busy, I'm just going to take an inch and a half wide strip of oak wood and just cut off several right triangles. And then we can go ahead and glue and nail the shelf in place into that little channel we cut for it and then glue and nail those little right triangles behind it to add a little bit of extra support. And that is solid. Once that glue is dried, it can easily hold five or six hundred grams. Now to add a little bit of a finishing touch to the shelf and to help ensure we can't accidentally push things off it once we actually go to use the shelf, I'm going to take some of the scrap wood and just add about an inch and a half lip to the back of it. And with the completion of that, we can now switch our attention to building the sides of the bed frame. So with that being said, here's a bunch of lumber that is six inches wide and an inch and a half thick. So I'm going to take two of these pieces and cut them down to 74 and 1 quarter inch long. I'm then going to take one of the other boards and rip it into an inch and a half square piece. We'll then cut that piece into five 2 inch long sections with a 45 degree cut at each end. Just like that. Now we can position these onto the ends of both of our side pieces and make sure it's overhanging by three and a half inches. And then we can repeat the same process we use for the joints of the frame. Glue, screw, and dowel pin. Perfect. Then repeat for the other three ends. Now if you remember, we cut out five of those two foot long pieces, but we only ended up using four. We'll hold on to the fifth one. We'll circle back to it in a bit. Now to finish off these sides, I'm going to go ahead and rip two more inch and a half square strips and two three quarters inch by inch and a half strips. I'll cut the two inch and a half square pieces down to 69 inches long, but the three quarters inch by inch and a half strips, I'm going to cut into several four inch long pieces. And now the chaos can begin. We're going to glue and nail one of our four inch long pieces into the dead center of one of our 69 inch long pieces. We are then going to take another four inch block and glue and nail it next to the first one, making sure to leave a three and one quarters inch gap between the two. And we'll repeat that process throughout the entire strip. And then once we're done, we'll move on to the second strip. And so with these pieces done, all that's left to do is to place them onto our side boards, center them, and then fasten them in place. We can place all of our pieces together now and then secure them in place by drilling through the mounting blocks. Impressive. Very nice. You got like three feet of air that time. Remember that fifth two foot long piece I told you to hold on to? Well, we can go ahead and mount that onto the front of the bed frame. Now I'm going to go ahead and mount a bracket at the front and the back of the inside of the bed that is capable of supporting an inch and a half tall and two inch wide stud. I'll then cut that said stud to fit. Now I know in the video I only have one stud going down the very center of the bed, but I'm actually going to add one more on each side for a total of three. One stud just simply isn't enough, and although I knew this from the beginning, I must have forgotten due to some heat-induced delirium because it was about 110 degrees outside. But regardless, with that, the bed frame itself is now finished being built, so we can give everything one last sanding and then get busy with staining. For stain, I'm going to be using Jacobine 2750.
once we've given the stain a chance to dry, I'm gonna come back with some of Minwax's polyacrylic finish and just give everything a solid three coats to help seal the wood and protect it. And while we give that a chance to dry, we can go finish everything up by cutting out the bed slats. For this, easy enough, I'm just going to take a piece of plywood and cut out 10 slats that are 61 inches long and 3 inches wide. And with that, everything is now complete and it's just a matter of putting it all together. But no bed is complete without a mattress, and so here's the mattress I'll be using. It's an All's Well hybrid memory foam mattress, and if I remember correctly, I believe this is made and sold out of Arizona, which is where I live, so that's pretty cool. This was really weird. I kind of felt like some guy in National Geographic helping a strange animal give birth. The mother rhino is giving birth. <laughs> Here I have four 13 inch cube storage bins I picked up at Target. I actually kind of designed the whole bed around these, particularly the shelf. And so all we have to do is open these guys up and just slide them into place. You know what I just realized? I don't have any sheets. Unfortunately, the room is just a little bit too small to get a full-size view of the bed, but hopefully those clips worked well enough. I've had this bed for almost exactly one month now, and I actually do really like it. The mattress is super comfortable, and I do really like the bed frame. I love the height of it. I love how there's storage in the front, like a decent amount of storage, but at the same time, it's still very simplistic, and it doesn't look that cluttered. As you saw in the clips, there's a lot of space underneath the bed, which I really like. I feel like it makes the room seem more open in a weird way, and I think that's awesome. And something else I think looks cool is you can very easily see the joints we made for the bed frame. So when you walk in, there's just a lot to look at and take in. But I'm not trying to horn my own toot. I'm just so happy it turned out well. But what do you guys think? Do you like it? What would you change about it if you were to make it for yourself? Let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to see more of this bed, check out my OnlyFans. Link for it down below. It's free.
But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. But if you didn't, please feel free to hit the thumbs down and unsubscribe for my OnlyFans. But regardless, thank you so much for watching. Lord willing, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. And please feel free to subscribe.